more than a while, but back into it. Uh, today I'm going to be tying for your, uh, what we call bomb nymph or heavy nymph. Uh, we use these a lot, well I use these a lot, uh, around the central plateau over winter or in fishing deeper pools. Um, I wanted to get away from the big uh, five mil uh, tungsten jobbies. Uh, so this uses a three and a half mil bead, uh, in this case it's black tungsten. I've uh, got a few wraps of lead, not too many. A uh, nice slim body tied with uh, fox squirrel dubbing and we're using the Semper Flash Crystal Pearl for the ribbing. Uh, a little ball of the uh, fox squirrel dubbing under the CDC and then a little CDC loop. Uh, it sounds like it's a bit going in but once you get into the swing of them they're actually uh, pretty easy to, to tie up and uh, CDC gives some wonderful movement uh, in the water and and often uh, I don't see the point in the uh, bomb nymph necessarily being sacrificial or just something to get an eagle or unweighted nymph down. Uh, I like the idea that they could be something to catch a fish as well. So i uh, go through the process, show you how they're done and uh, hopefully you enjoy it. Alright, starting off here we've got our 3.5mm uh, tungsten bead. Got about 8 to 10 wraps of lead. Uh, it's usually enough. Uh, you can go more, you can go less, depends what you want to do. Um, but yeah, you get your thread started again. Uh, I think I have in all of these videos. I'm using uh, Simplify Nano Silk. Uh, in this case, it's in brown. Uh, 30 denier or 18 or however you want to uh, measure it. And you just want to get your base layer of thread down here and uh, get some over top of that lead as well. Get it all uh, secured in place. And we just work our way down uh, the hook shank. Uh, in this case, I'm using a Kamasan uh, B110, which is a nice curved hook. Uh, I'm using it in a size 10 for this. It's, I'll tie them down to a size 14 or 12 and have a range, range of weights as well. And uh, once you've got that down, just get rid of the tag end. Uh, from there, we'll take our uh, crystal pearl from Semper Flash, which is uh, sort of a UV flashy uh, strand of uh, material. Um, you know, this is the way I'm doing this pattern. You can, of course, uh, do any variation of colours and materials that you want to get whatever effect you're looking for. Um, use wire which will be a bit more durable than the flash which can get chewed up a bit but uh, sometimes it's handy to have that uh, little bit of colour and flash in there but yeah you take your pick like uh, Semper Fly is a great range of wires uh, you could try using uh, silk thread or no ribbing at all but uh, take your pick and see what you like as far as the colours go and everything like that and we'll go on to the next step Right, next up we're going to put our dubbing up the body and I'll try to keep this nice and slim. Uh, I'm using fox squirrel, just natural fox squirrel. Uh, it's definitely safe to say the last couple of seasons has become my uh, favourite dubbing as far as natural furs and stuff like that go. And you just want to make your little uh, dubbing noodle on there and I try to keep it as thin and tight as I can. And uh, again, I, I touched on a few times, just try to keep that... Uh, Thread nice and as close to the hook as you're willing to go. Uh, the closer it is, the more control you have there, and then you just want to build up your body. And that's your uh, march it forward up the hook. And it'll take a couple of turns usually. Um, I'd rather spend a bit more time just uh, making sure I'm not sandwiching too much material into there. Uh, you can always add more but it's a bit of a nightmare trying to take stuff off. And you'll just build this up until you've got a nice uh, abdomen built up here. Um, I've used this a lot around the central plateau like I said at the start and I assume when it's taken it's taken some sort of caddis or you know, something similar or Maybe the flash and all the movement just uh, annoy them enough that they'll have a chomp on it. That's definitely uh, 
accounted for a few fish. Right, once you're just up on top of those lead wraps, you can uh, just stop there and take your crystal flash or a Just want to wrap it around, so just try not to catch it on the hook there. And I'm just going to get some ribbing, some bit of colouring on it. And just try to keep it as evenly spaced as you can. Uh, there's a buggy uh, little number, so I quite like the way with the um, fox squirrel and the guard here stick out all over the show. And just add a little bit more movement. And once you've got it up there nice and uh, secure. Just tie that in and trim it off. Right, this next step is uh, building the or creating the loop for our, our CDC or a little dubbing loop. Um, I find it a bit easier to do it at this point um, rather than after uh, you've put the little dubbing ball here. Uh, so all we want to do, and it's a little bit hard to explain with the way the camera is, but I'll pull some thread from there out towards me and pick and choose how much you want. I'm only using the length of one CDC feather, so I don't need a hell of a lot. And once you're there, you can just hook your finger in and pull out some more. So you've got just a little over double what you need again and pull that back over top of your hook shank and start tying it in. Generally I'll keep my finger uh, stuck in the loop there which you can kind of just make out and then I'll twist it. And so I put one finger over the top, pull it back like that and hold it up. Almost as if you're going to tie a half hitch. And I'm just using my thread to tie it in uh, so it ends uh, just up the top there. At that point it's nice and tight in. I don't need it until later on, but just having that extra uh, space makes life uh, a little bit easier. And it's going to get away a little bit, but yeah, I don't mind. Hopefully it works for you as well. I might try to do a video uh, somewhere in the next uh, week or so where we can just focus on uh, how we do that with uh, nothing in the way. Uh, from there, we're just back into building up that uh, dubbing loop, and, not a dubbing loop, but a little dubbing ball and behind the bead. And just pull that down. Nothing special here, it's all pretty simple. Just building up a bit more of the body, a bit too much thread out. And then you just build that up a bit more. You know, sometimes you'll get caught up in the little dubbing loop you made, but. The little guard here is just going to be sticking out left, right and centre and you know, give it a nice little bugginess and plenty of stuff moving around and yeah. Right, I'm just done with this part. And just build that up until you're in behind a bead. And on to the next point. Right, uh, from here we're on to our uh, CDC dubbing loop and there's, there's lots of tools out there you can use now. I know uh, my Petty Jean has a whole range of them and uh, the good people at Stonfo do as well. Um, but you know, I find this pretty easy and we're, we're not trying to get something that's you know a perfect little uh, st you know, stacking of uh, CD, uh, CDC. This is just designed to be um, a whole bunch of uh, movement in it. So, all I do, I, I quite like these uh, shepherd's hook tools uh, for it. Get my beard out of the way. So, uh, yeah, super easy. But there, there's a whole range of other tools you can uh, use. I just get it in uh, there so that we have opened up our loop. Uh, get a little bit of uh, wax. I don't have to, I just find it helps uh, get the CDC to stick in there a little bit while we're working with it. Uh, we'll take our CDC feather 
you just want to uh, preen them out so that they're all sticking out uh, sort of 90 degrees from the uh, stem of the feather itself. From there, we'll just slide that in and just get it to where we're happy with it and let it catch uh, between those uh, two uh, bits of thread. Through. You can work out how much you want out. If you want it shorter, you can use a smaller feather or uh, pull them back. And then from there, we're just going to snip away uh, the stem. Uh, I've seen a whole lot of other ways to do it. This I've just gotten used to doing, and it works for these. Now, from there, we're going to plan that wax is going to let it stick in there nicely. Just even up, you can actually just tap the bottoms and that'll uh, slide them through a little bit more if you want, get them more even. And you're just going to spin your uh, shepherd's tool. Uh, eventually, in the background here, you'll see that start to. Uh, there we go, spin around. And that's just going to catch them in and hold them uh, nice and tightly. Then, once we're happy with that, Take our hackle pliers. You don't have to, you can just use your fingers. I just find this is easier to control it than uh, using my fingers. And just get this in out of the way. From here, we're just going to start wrapping. Just like you would if it was a you know, metal dubbing or a soft hackle feather, only we've got it. Uh, CDC sticking through uh, some thread instead. And just keep wrapping it up over and over and it's eventually going to build up until you've got a nice little uh, CDC collar there. And I'll give it a couple more wraps of the thread once we've gone through which will help hold it in. And then all we've got to do is secure it in place. A couple more wraps with our uh, thread on the bottom. Take your snips and Presto. One last step and that's tying it off. Uh, I like to put just a little, little, little bit of uh, dubbing in behind here. Um, well, there can be a little bit of a gap sometimes uh, between the CDC and the bead and that's just I find tidies it up a little bit. I'll put a few photos of a few different uh, variations on at the end of this, uh, just to give you an idea. But take the good old uh, whip finish tool and just like that, done like dinner. Good to go. Yeah, so there it is. I'd love to see if uh, any of you lot uh, give it a go. So if you do. Uh, by all means, tag me in the, uh, in the photos if you're sharing it on social or anything like that. I, I really would like to see it. And, um, yeah, happy tying. <laughs>